The Queen Mary is a massive transatlantic liner that was built in the 1930s. After the war, the ship spent a couple dozen more years making sea voyages, until in 1967, she was permanently stationed in Long Beach, USA. Now it's a sought-after museum. A series of mystical, blood-chilling incidents that are said to have taken place on the ship gave her a fair share of notoriety. Fast forward to the present day, and a photographer Ann Calder, together with her ex-husband and dwarf son Lucas, arrives on board the Queen Mary to pitch an unusual project to the ship's captain. She wants to create a guidebook of the ship as seen through a child's eyes. Things take an unexpected turn when Lucas, left to his own devices, starts roaming the ship and stumbles across a family of ghosts, whose story is told parallel to the main plot in the form of a flashback. All these facts about the Queen Mary are true. Nowadays, it's a popular museum that owes much of its fame to ghosts that are believed to haunt the ship and walk her decks. The filmmakers took a story of a girl named Jackie, whose exact cause of death is unknown, though. The girl either drowned in a second-class swimming pool, or was murdered. Jackie is the center of two plot lines, one taking place on a Halloween night in 1938, and the other, in the present day. If we're being completely honest, claiming that the film has proper plot lines would be a stretch. Haunting of the Queen Mary was written and directed by Gary Shore. At the dawn of his career, he was making music videos and commercials. In the cinema world, Shore is mainly known for Dracula Untold, a 2014 re-envisioning of the story of the iconic vampire. The movie was made for the Universal Horror Universe and starred Luke Evans. Knowing the director's background, it's not surprising that Haunting of the Queen Mary feels like a music video. Shore is telling the story through a series of vibrant, visually arresting scenes that, alas, have little to do with each other. Trying to cover his sketchy, ragged visual style and the lack of good storytelling, Shore follows two parallel stories, switching between them without rhyme or reason. In a sense, Haunting of the Queen Mary feels more like a performance-slash-video installation. Here you have a scene, in which an eight-year-old Jackie is dancing with Fred Astaire. Next, you see her possessed father chopping random victims with an axe. Next, there is the infamous Lady in White, who crashes into a piano, which leaves her face a bloody mess. As already said, the movie is packed with catchy, memorable moments. This and a bunch of mean, yet effective screamers is enough to keep the viewer glued to the screen. But the film runs for two hours, and at some point, you're starting to get bored. Another problem is that you can't fully appreciate some of the filmmaker's choices without knowing the context. For example, to understand why the movie lingers on the death of an ordinary crew member in the boiler room, you need to know that it's one of the most popular real-life legends surrounding the Queen Mary. It feels like the film was made as a visualization to a guided tour of the real ship. Without the so much needed context, it's just a beautiful and spooky video with a bloated runtime, which has eye-pleasing visuals, but no compelling story to tell.